Mm. Are you just getting into quality heritage style stitched boots and fancy some of the brogue wingtip styles you've seen on social media? You know, like this Joseph Cheney tweed boot, for example, or the Tricker Stowe, or maybe the American Allen Edmonds Dalton boot. Then you went online to check them out and found that they cost US $500 and above. What? <laughs> Why so much? Keep watching. I'll show you a viable alternative for your first brogue wingtip boot. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land that I live on, the Wajit people. This is the third part of my series called New to Quality Boots. Uh, the series is aimed at people new to quality, heritage-style stitched boots and who have only experienced the cheaper, fashion-centric glue construction boots from shopping centers and other chain retail stores. It's a big move. If you spend two or three hundred Australian dollars on a pair of Echo, or, or if you, you're in America or Europe and you're used to Timberland, for example, for a couple of hundred US dollars, you'll be shocked to learn that quality boots can cost upwards of 300 US dollars, well upwards. And brogue wingtips in particular can be much more than that. The difference is in the quality of construction as well as the quality of the natural materials used in these stitched boots that can be resold, uh, be more durable, and patina or wear in such a way that they age gracefully and beautifully. In this video, I'm focusing on brogue wingtip boots, the most popular currently seeming to be the Tricker's Stowe boot, a prime example of the English country boot style, but certainly not on its own with the American Ellen Edmonds Dalton boot and other English styles like the Granson Fred uh, and like this lovely Joseph Cheney tweed boot, which you can see in my full review up there. But if you did investigate the Tricker Stowe, you'll have seen it sell for £585 sterling. This tweed boot sells for £475. The Ellen Edmonds Dalton sells for $500. US Even Granson, re-establishing its old heritage quality as a mid-range boot manufacturer, brings out the Made in India Fred boot at around €500. Euros. So if you really like the Brogue wingtip style and you want to take the first step into Goodyear welted boots instead of glued boots, it's a big jump. However, there is an alternative for you to uh, take that first step. But we, before we look at the viable alternative, let's take a look at the style. Brogue boots or boots with holes uh, punched through in a regular pattern and wingtip boots, boots showing the winged panels from toe to the sides of the vamp, um, have a strong connection with each other in history. Brogues are a 16th century invention of Irish or Scottish origin uh, that were designed for walking through the countryside on marshy, boggy land. The perforations were originally functional rather than decorative. They let the water out as you trudged through the bog, so you didn't end up with a boot full of water. That's why, especially in the UK, they're still classed as country boots, uh, and, and in the category of country boots are meant to be worn in the countryside as opposed to in the city. Of course, that 18th, 19th century distinction has long gone. Today, they can be worn with great versatility, uh, even with a suit, because in dark colours they can be worn formally, uh, or they can be worn casually with slacks, chinos, uh, wool or flannel pants, and tweeds or jeans and t-shirts, depending on the upper's leather. Wingtips, on the other hand, merely refer to that winged design, and not all wingtips actually have holes in them. But eventually, wingtips and brogues came together as full brogues, and nowadays what we call wingtips are almost certainly full brogues. That is, they have the wingtip design, and they have the brogue perforations. As I said, a good brogue boot made in one of the stitched construction methods like Goodyear welting or stitch down or Weltschuhn construction can cost a long way north of three or four hundred US dollars. The most famous examples are in the 500s. 
Uh, by the way, if you want to see the difference between all the ways boots are constructed, you can catch this video up here. So, if you like the style, what is an entry-level boot that you can buy and try to see if you like the style and then decide if you actually like the feel of a welted boot? Uh, because moving up does take a bit of getting used to if you've only had the fashion-centric cemented construction style boots. They tend to be heavier. Uh, they will take a few days or more to break in and allow the sole and stiff welt to flex as well as allow the thicker full grain leathers to mold your movements and flex around your ankles and the top of your vamp. It makes sense to not jump right in and spend several hundred dollars uh, more than you're used to spending. And this is the alternative entry-level brogue wingtip boot. This is the simply named wingtip boot by Thursday Boot Company. Now, this is not meant to be a deep review. I've already done that and you can check it out here. But what I will do in this video is tell you a bit about Thursday, the construction of these boots, and why they can be your first entry into brogue wingtip boots. Thursday is a relatively new quality heritage style boot company founded in 2014 when the two founders couldn't find quality boots they wanted at an affordable price and decided that they could start a boot company to make them. They started with a Kickstarter campaign and History was made as they founded an internet-based direct-to-consumer company making most of their boots out of uh, one of the shoemaking capitals in the Americas, Leon in Mexico. Keeping infrastructure, uh, wages and material costs uh, down and removing the middlemen retailers, they offer most of their boots at the US $200 mark. And this wingtip boot sells for US $235. Taking a look at the construction and materials, it's made using the Goodyear welted method of construction, considered a gold standard by boot enthusiasts. You can check out my video deep diving into Goodyear welted construction up here. But basically, a thin strip of leather called the welt is sewn onto the uppers uh, and insole on the inside of the boot, while it is also sewn through on the outside to the midsole and sometimes outsole as in this case. Thursday uses a rubber studded outsole on this boot. It's modeled after the UK made uh, and very famous day-night outsole. And it's pretty good for grip and durability as well as low profile for being dressy. Inside the boot, some of the cost savings, when you compare these to traditional brands, start to become apparent. Boots like the Stowe and the Dalton and these two will tend to have leather midsoles and insoles and the cavity that's caused by the welt going around the edge of the boot will be filled with natural cork. Traditionalists will tell you that that's the real gold standard because it's all natural, will last a long time as you know leather molds and doesn't break, and over time your feet settle in and it feels made just for you. Thursday does use a real cork filling layer and a leather midsole in this boot, uh, but the insole is a foam-based insole. It's a little cheaper, but it also means comfort straight out of the box. As a first time wearer of heritage style boots, the foam inside means that these feel like the soft foam based boots you're used to wearing and you don't have to struggle with as much of a break in as with all leather component boots. The downside is that the foam will break down over time and I'm told will then start to feel a little lumpy. Uh, look, but honestly, it will take some time to do that and by then you probably need a resole so you can fix it all at the same time. Uh, and that's the big advantage over cement construction boots where the soles are just glued on. Even if they're molded and fake stitched to look like these, they're still cement construction and they're still glued on. When the soles wear out on your cement construction boots, you throw them away. When these wear out, you can take them to a good cobbler who can remove the stitches, uh, remove the worn out sole and replace and restitch it. And if the insole is troubling you at that time, get it done as well. And you'll have a boot that could last you decades as long as you take care of these uppers. For all that, these are priced at US $235. And Thursday have never raised their prices even after the pandemic. I don't know how they do that, to be honest. Uh, for that reason alone, that makes this a viable alternative as a first time entry purchase because there are no other quality, uh, properly stitch constructed brogue wingtip boots for that price. 
Other reasons as a first buy. The initial comfort out of the box. The looks, elegant and sleekly dressy. Uh, the full leather lining that's comfortable and, and helps to thicken up the uppers. And the use of a steel shank between the heel and the ball of the foot that provides arch support as well as torsional stability. This has all the attributes of a higher priced brogue boot. This boot is in what Thursday calls dark oak leather from the well-known Lafarc Tannery in Leon. It's a good firm leather measuring about two millimeters thickness, which is about average for lower price range quality boots. It has a hand burnished finish, uh, so adds to the stylishness of this style. Caring for this leather is simple, uh, but put away the thought of hard waxes like tins of kiwi. Full grain leather needs to be fed rather than waxed over, so the term is conditioning. You can use any quality conditioner, but my go-to for smooth leathers is Venetian shoe cream, which conditions the leather, but also has enough waxes in it to give it a reasonable shine. Condition it at least a couple of times a year, maybe more depending on frequency of wear uh, and what conditions you wear them in, like you know rain and snow, which doesn't happen here in Australia. When you do condition it, get a good horsehair brush first and brush off the dirt uh, dust and grime. Then put a light coat of Venetian on. Uh, if you want, a, a, put a couple of light coats allowing it to dry between coats. And then when it dries to a haze, give it a really good brushing to uh, polish it up and remove the excess. If you want, you can put a thin coat of cream polish after the conditioning, like um, I use a Tarago product, which is a mid-range uh, price product rather than its more expensive Sophia Cousin. They're the same company. I would use a neutral cream because of the hand burnished finish. You don't want a dark brown cream polish to wipe out the difference in the shades that you get in the shaft and along the, uh, the, the toe box. Uh, if you really want to shine, you can put a smear of hard wax. I use a damp sponge to pick up the wax from the tin and then dab and then smooth it over uh, and then again let it haze and brush. An important aspect of boot care is to brush it regularly even if you don't condition it every time that you brush it. People say brush after every wear, but I'm not so Catholic about it and, and I brush maybe once a week or once a month. Brushing is important though because the everyday grit and sand and dirt can accumulate, especially if uh, on waxy leathers. They can dry on and then eventually scratch and crack your leather. And if they get really dirty, like say muddy dirty, wipe the mud off with a damp rag and then, if you really have to, you can use a saddle soap. Thursday offers the wingtip boot in seven different uppers, leathers and colours and two of them on a crepe sole rather than the studded sole. Boot care will be different uh, between the different leathers, but you can ask Thursday what to do. Their customer service is usually very good. Before I finish, let me talk about sizing. Uh, if you're new to quality boots, you'd almost certainly have been buying boots and shoes in what is roughly your true size. However, it would be best if you go to a store, any shoe store, and get yourself measured on a Brannock device to learn your true size. A Brannock device is one of those aluminium things that I'm sure you've stood on before. You stand on it and they slide levers and you get measured. You see, the thing is that in most heritage boots, they size large, particularly American heritage boots, and the advice is to take a half size down. So if you measure a nine, for example, take an eight and a half. However, with these Thursday wingtip boots, the last, or the mold that they used to build it on, is shaped long and sleek, but narrow. So in this case, I was advised to take my true size. Now, Thursday are changing some of their lasts, so it's advisable when you buy this to check with them. Give them a few examples of your sneaker size and whatever brand you wear, uh, as well as some well-known dress shoes that you, you, that you wear. Give them some examples. They can advise you on the, on the fit based on those. So there you have it. Now, this has been my opinion of what you can do if you're new to quality stitched boots. If you like the look of them, of a brogue wingtip, uh, but you can't afford to, or you don't particularly want to spend four or 500 US dollars on a boot that you're not really sure you like or maybe you're not sure you wear very much. The Thursday wingtip makes it an affordable option to try. 
see if you like heritage construction boots, and see if you want to go on with them and buy some more. I'm not sponsored by Thursday, so this is my personal opinion. I mean, who knows? One day you may have a hundred pairs in your collection <laughs> and start to make YouTube boot reviews. <laughs> anyway, I hope you like the video. Uh, and if you do, please uh, click on the like button below because that helps me out. If you're not subscribed, please do that. Click on subscribe down there and YouTube will tell you when I bring up more videos about this generous and interesting boot world that you're about to join. Welcome. Until the next time, take care and see you soon.